urinary system, which consists of the kidneys, the ureters, and the bladder. The urinary system is located retroperitoneal, that is, that is, it is behind the peritoneum. And in order to see it, we're going to have to move a few things out of the way. And you can see the kidneys located behind everything else. You'll notice that the right kidney is a little bit lower than the left kidney, and that was because the liver was originally placed here. And also know that posteriorly the kidneys are protected by the rib cage. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at this kidney right here. In this kidney model here, we can see that the kidney has a cortex around the outside and an inner portion, the medulla. At the hilum, we can see we have the renal artery that enters here and it is a branch of the abdominal aorta and we have the renal vein which drains into the inferior vena cava and back to the heart and the ureter which carries urine down to the bladder to be stored. The renal artery comes in and the kidneys have a terrific blood flow. They get about one-fifth to one-quarter of the cardiac output. The renal artery branches into segmental arteries and then the segmental arteries branch into the interlobar arteries. The interlobar arteries go around and become the arcuate arteries and they give off branches called the interlobular arteries. The interlobular arteries branch to form the afferent arterioles that enter the glomerulus and we'll take a closer look here. Arterial blood flows through the arcuate artery into the interlobular artery. The interlobular artery gives off branches which are called the afferent arterioles and these are bringing blood to the Bowman's capsule. Within the Bowman's capsule we have a capillary bed called the glomerulus and the blood goes through this capillary bed and it leaves the Bowman's capsule by the efferent arteriole. This then has two fates. It can either go through the vasorata or it can go through the peritubular capillaries. Since both systems involve capillaries, then this is considered a portal system. Blood from these capillary bed drains into the interlobular vein which joins the arcuate vein and which then drains into the interlobar vein and those become the renal veins which leave the kidney and The structural and functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. About 15% of these are juxtamedullary nephrons and the remaining are cortical nephrons. So let's take a closer look at the nephron. We have between 1 to 1.2 million nephrons per kidney. There are two different types of nephrons. We have cortical nephrons and juxtamedullary, but they both have the same parts. They consist of the Bowman's capsule, which contains the glomerulus, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, which has a descending limb and an ascending limb, and the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule drains into the collecting duct. Now, let's take a closer look at the Bowman's capsule. This is an enlarged view of the Bowman's capsule. Within the Bowman's capsule, we have a network of capillaries called the glomerulus. Blood enters through the afferent arteriole and it leaves through the efferent arteriole. We can identify this as the afferent arteriole 
because it is larger than the efferent arteriole and also because the first part of the distal convoluted tubule comes over and touches the afferent arteriole at an area called the juxtaglomerial apparatus. The capillaries within the glomerulus have our fenestrated capillaries, which means they are more porous than the capillaries in the systemic circulation. The capillaries then have the basement membrane, and then surrounding that, we have podocytes, which have little feet that make up the slit membrane. The basement membrane filters out large proteins, and the slit membrane created by the podocytes filters out medium-sized proteins. Because the afferent arteriole is larger than the efferent arteriole, pressure is generated here, which forces fluid out of the blood into this space around here. This filtrate leaves by this area here, which is called the proximate convoluted tubule. The filtrate that is created within the, the Bowman's capsule is essentially plasma without the proteins. The filtrate formed in the Bowman's capsule leaves by the proximal convoluted tubule. Here, a lot of things are reabsorbed. All of the glucose, all of the amino acids, about 65% of the sodium, and consequently 65% of the water. The fluid travels into the loop of Henle. It goes down the descending limb, and water moves out passively into the medulla because of the concentration gradient. As it comes back up the ascending limb, sodium is pumped out, and it becomes the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule loops over and connects to the afferent arteriole at the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The distal convoluted tubule, a lot of things are secreted, and the fluid enters into the collecting tubule. As the fluid goes down the collecting tubule into the medulla, the urine can be concentrated because the medulla has a very high sodium content. Here we can see the distal convoluted tubule draining into the collecting duct. As the filtrate moves down the collecting duct, it can be concentrated until it reaches the renal papilla. Once it passes the renal papilla, it becomes urine and no further changes could be made. The urine travels through the minor calyx, and where two minor calyxes meet, it becomes a major calyx. The major calyces drain into the renal pelvis, and from there, into the ureter. The urine goes down the ureter to the bladder for storage and excretion.